Hello, and welcome to the Military Child Education Coalition Parent-to-Parent -parent Webinar, Building the College Mindset in Ages 12 to 15. This webinar is funded through a generous donation from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and is the third in a four-webinar series. If you missed the first two webinars, Building the College Mindset, Birth through nine, Ages 9, or Building the College Mindset, Ages 9 through 12, you can find the recording on our website on the webinar page. If you did attend either of the first two webinars, you are going to hear some of the same information in this one as in the first webinar. We do this so that we don't skip important concepts as we progress through the different age-related sessions. Many of our participants are only going to attend the webinar relative to the age of their child, so we need to be sure that all of the concepts are covered appropriately. We also ask that you keep in mind that this is a webinar about building mindset in your child about attending college, not instruction on how to get them into college. The Military Child Education Coalition, or MSEC, is a not-for-profit organization that works with parents to help them become their child's best advocate. MSEC promotes partnerships between communities, military installations, and the local school districts. In 2005, they created the Parent to Parent Program to better provide parents with resources and information to empower them in their role as advocates for their children as they negotiate the complex and diverse educational systems found throughout the U.S. and the world. Our parent to parent teams are made up of individuals with personal experience and professional training on moving, separation, and the reality of change for our military children. My name is Heather Dunton, and I was an Army brat growing up. I served 10 years in the Army as an aviation officer. I am now a military spouse and raising two military children, who are currently ages 9 and 11. And I've been with the Military Child Education Coalition for two years. I'm Cindy Risch. I'm also an Army veteran and an Army spouse of more than 25 plus years. I've been with MSEC in the Parent to Parent Program for more than eight years. And I have three children who have all applied, been accepted, and graduated from college. And I'm now working on my grandkids. The Military Child Education Coalition, also known as MSEC, is a nonprofit organization that partners with military installations and their surrounding school districts. MSEC exists to make sure that all military children have the best possible education through their transitions, through deployments, through whatever military children face. We want to make sure that the fact that their parents are in the military doesn't change a thing for them. Good. I got a ride home. Did you have your helmet on? I don't. I didn't bring my helmet because I didn't even have a. Because uh, I didn't have a bike, so there was no reason to have a helmet on. My husband's been in the military for 21 years. He's still active duty. Oh, this is from Miss Barnaby. All right. Well, when he's deployed, I feel kind of bad because you don't know when he's going to come back or when he's going to leave. It just happens out of nowhere. There are people who get to move in the summer, and that's awesome. And that would to me would be one of the best times to move. But um, when you get orders is when you move. I've been gone so much. I want some stability in her life and I don't want the constant moving around and changing schools. My daddy, we always FaceTime and Skype. I cover my thumb up and then I just get it real close and then cover my thumb up, get it far away and then I make weird faces. Caitlin's really resilient, but moving so much, it's hard. Before we made the decision to move, I looked into the school districts because I was really nervous. Like Caitlin's education is very important to me. Do you need a snack? Yes, mom. I'll take that string cheese and maybe something else. Okay. You want to know, are my kids going to be safe? Are they going to go to a good school? Where do I live so my kids can be in a good school? I love school. As an education organization, we focus in on academics and making sure our military students have the best education possible. 
We do newborns all the way up to college application process and financial aid. MSEC has a S2S program that is really good. If a new student comes to the school, then that S2S student will sit with that new student at lunch, show them around, help them out. In our student-to-student -student organizations, we ask them to go out beyond the walls of the schools and serve their community. They get to know the needs of their community, and while you're working alongside one another, you also build those deep, long-lasting relationships that we strive for in student-to-student, -student. and it is one of our main principles. All right, you guys ready for one more story, and then we're going to do crafts? Yes! Sounds good? In 2005, the Army contracted with MSEC to establish Parent to Parent. Parent to Parent allows us to give information and resources to parents as they navigate the education systems found here in the U.S. and throughout the world. We are teaching parents how to go home and help out their kids, whether it's reading, math, science. One of the programs is called Early Literacy. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. It's okay. We pick books and then we build a theme around the books because reading's the key that opens every door. MSEC serves to serve the children of those who serve us. We have one overarching principle in our organization where no matter where you come from, what you look like, what you believe, you are 100% accepted. You know that um... we can't bubble wrap our kids. I mean, as moms, that's what I want to do. I want to bubble wrap them every day before they go out the door. Stop with the stop sign. Keep going. But what we can do, it's like a rubber band. The military kids like a rubber band. We can give them strategies and coping skills so that you can go on and, and do great things in life, no matter where you've been stationed. The topics we'll be discussing today are the college mindset, college readiness, what students need to focus on to more successfully put them in a position to attend college, social media presence, students with special needs, and how parents can help. First, let's start with the word mindset. According to Dr. Carol Dweck, mindset is when people believe that the most, their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brains and talents are just the starting point. This view creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishment. Mindset can be summed up as knowing that you are capable of something and pursuing it. What is a growth mindset? We can liken the theory of growth and fixed mindset to the story of the tortoise and the hare. To have a fixed mindset means to believe one's basic abilities, intelligence and talents are just fixed traits. A growth mindset means that you understand that talents and abilities can be developed through effort, practicing and persistence. People with a fixed mindset often develop and peak before their peers, appearing to be more intelligent and successful than everyone else. However, this is a dangerous trap to fall into. The moment we believe that success is determined by an ingrained level of ability, we will be brittle in the face of adversity. This is what happens to the hare. The tortoise, however, with a growth mindset, continues to power through and work hard, overtaking the hare eventually and winning the race. Nice one, Terry. Thanks, narrator. You're welcome, Terry. How many of us think ourselves as not maths people, or creative, or sociable, or athletic? If we are to fulfil our potentials, we have to start thinking differently. We are not chained or bound to our current abilities. Take this tree for example. 
It needs to be fed with lots of minerals and food for it to grow, just like you do. By continuing to nurture and care for this tree, it can grow taller and stronger than other trees. The trunk and branches will literally explode with growth, just like your brain. Your brain is malleable and physically can change size and grow. Even more so at a young age, the activity and growth of the brain during your short teenage years is phenomenal. So how do you do this? Well, there's no shortcut or secret solution. It's as simple as hard work, commitment and perseverance. In any chosen field or career path, you are certain to have some level of failure at one point. But at each pitfall we come across, you must learn to overcome it. There is a popular movie quote that goes like this. Why do we fall, Bruce? So we can learn to pick ourselves back up. Batman wasn't born with any superpowers, abilities or talents. And just as Gotham's Dark Knight understood, he had to train relentlessly to succeed. So must you. Right now these fixed mindset learners might be ahead of others, but they are afraid of failure. And when they reach the peak that they're comfortable with, they'll just stay there. They will never reach their full potential. Failure is the almost essential step to success. And as the growth mindset continues to improve, they will overtake the rest. If you feel like you're in a fixed mindset, don't lose hope because there is a lot we can do to change that. But start by listening to our fixed mindset voice. And when you hear it, talk back with a growth mindset voice. If you hear, I can't do it, add yet. Fixed mindsets can change. So what mindset are you in? The college mindset means making college a real, concrete, achievable thing for your child. We can start by making the connection that the harder they work in school, the better opportunities they will have to pursue their desired career. Discussing college is the first and most important step. Talk about it and explain it as though it is the student's next step following high school. Discuss where you went to college or any friends or family members who went to college. Make college part of your daily language. Throughout this webinar, we will use the term college when we address any form of post-secondary education. This term is used inclusively and is also meant to address anywhere higher education is pursued, including career and technical schools and community colleges. We suggest you keep this in mind when discussing college with your child, as not all children are interested in attending four-year universities. All of us need to follow our strengths, and for some, including your children, that can mean pursuing a technical career path. The best way to encourage your child to want to attend college is to make the connection between higher education and a higher quality of life. More education opens up more opportunities and flexibility in their life. If one job or career comes to an unexpected end, education will always provide more opportunities to them. If your child is the first person in the family to consider college, they may be intimidated. Helping them build self-confidence through a growth mindset will help them overcome any self-doubt. Complimenting them on their hard work will go a long way. Hard work highlights the long-term effort, not the short-term results. The sooner they start making a plan for college, the more successful they will be, especially if that plan also includes ideas and savings to pay for advanced education. Talking about college, using the term in everyday language, and visiting college campuses goes a long way in creating comfort zones. College is no longer an ambiguous place that people go to study day and night. Instead, it will become something that can be accomplished and something to look forward to. Students may welcome the opportunity to pursue subjects in more depth or take introductory classes in subjects they are interested in but know nothing about. Ensuring your child understands that education is the foundation to the successful future is absolutely the key in building their mindset to attend college. Their education is like the foundation of a house. The more education they have, the bigger or stronger or higher they can build their house. 
Every certification, license, or degree is like building another room onto their house. And the beauty is that they get to choose their foundation. They get to choose how big, strong, or high their house is, depending on the education they pursue and how much time, effort, and money they are willing to invest in their future. The reality is that education costs money. There are many scholarships and loans available to students, but being prepared is key. If there is a way for them to start saving money now, encourage them to do so. If it means saving a percentage of their birthday money or allowance, try to make it a habit. They should see their money grow over time and start forming a plan on how to pay for college. They should not take for granted that mom and dad will pay for it. The most successful students figure out how to pay for college themselves, either through scholarships or working jobs while attending school. See what you can do about helping them now. If it is feasible, start a matching fund. It can be dollar for dollar or every $200 they invest, you will invest $100. Or if you haven't already, start, start, consider starting a 529 education savings plan. Be creative. Learn more at savingforcollege.com. The idea of college can be overwhelming, especially at this age when students are still figuring out middle and high school. Having parental support is important to help them keep them focused and motivated. The more you discuss college with them, the more you relate to them that it is a priority in your family. College readiness is simply the nuts and bolts of being ready for college, being prepared mentally, emotionally, and academically, and financially. It's the overall picture of the college-ready student. The more challenging classes they choose to take now, the more academically prepared they will be for going on to college. In order to successfully prepare for college, you must plan in reverse or backwards plan. This means to ask the questions, what career does your child want? Which college will best prepare your child for that career? What classes does that college require for acceptance? What classes does your child need to take in middle school so that they're able or qualified to take those classes in high school? Education is the stepping stone. Help your child set themselves up for success by planning backwards, starting with the end goal in mind. The schedule your 7th and 8th graders select will structure the options they have available in high school. To ensure the most options, take the most advanced math classes available. Create a six-year plan from 6th grade through high school graduation of which classes to take. This becomes critical to military students who may be transferring schools during their middle and high school years. The Military Child Education Coalition recommends the following. Four English credits, four math credits, completing Algebra 1 in ninth grade three social studies credits, four science credits, two foreign language credits of the same language as a minimum, one computer science credit. If they don't have enough time to get all their desired classes in during the school year, consider taking summer school to fulfill requirements. Research what courses offer dual credit or dual enrollment and plan to take those. Your school district may offer a variety of options, advanced placement, International Baccalaureate, or IB, and or the advanced, Advancement via Individual Determination, or AVID. The Advanced Placement, or AP classes, are college courses offered in high school. In order to receive college credit or the, for the AP course, the student must take the AP exam, which is given in May. The Advancement via Individual Determination, or AVID program, helps students who have the potential to succeed in a rigorous academic program who need some support. In the program, students take college preparatory classes and an AVID class, which teaches note-taking and study skills. To learn more about this program, go to www.avid.org. The International Baccalaureate, or IB, program encourages students to become active learners. IB is age-specific. Middle years program is for students 11 to 16, and the diploma program is for students 16 to 19 years old. To learn more about this program, go to www.ibo.org. Good study habits are grounded in time management and self-discipline, which grow with maturity. Specifically, your child needs to focus on note-taking and efficient studying, knowing or finding out what will be on the test in order to focus their study time. Does your child feel responsible for their own grades? 
Do they come home and do their homework or projects without being reminded or nagged? Put the ownership of their grades on them. Celebrate good grades when report cards come home, but avoid giving them monetary rewards. If they do go to college, they, want to, they need to have good grades. And in order to succeed in college, they will need to be self-motivated. So start those positive habits now. The grades your child makes in ninth grade count towards their college admissions and eligibility for scholarships. So they need to know to take it seriously starting their freshman year. Their ninth through 12th year grades will affect their cumulative grade point average. Part of growing up is learning the ability to take care of yourself, learning independence and preparing for adulthood. The best parents are not the ones who do everything for their children. Children will be the most successful if they know how to do things for themselves, and that starts now, if they have not already started. Children at this age should be self-sufficient, able to take care of their daily needs to include cooking, laundry, and housekeeping. Not only will knowing how to take care of themselves be helpful and build independence, it also builds incredible self-confidence. Study.com recommends a sense of confidence and responsibility not only helps ease the transition from high school to college, but it is also vital for success in later life. Self-confidence can help your teenager approach professors with questions or problems that will make socializing with other students much easier. Helping your child to set difficult goals in, and encouraging him or her to follow through on them is one method of developing confidence and a sense of responsibility. In general, it's important to set boundaries and show that you expect your son or daughter to make mature decisions while also learning from an occasional mistake. This is taken from the Guide for Parents Preparing for ch Your Child for Early for College. Prepare or part of independence is knowing how to manage money. One way to teach your child monetary habits is dividing possible purchases into needs versus wants. They may not have many needs at this age that they need to manage money for, but reminding them that when they are in college, they will need to buy their own food and gas. Now you can manage long-term wants versus short-term wants, long-term needs, long-term wants versus short-term wants. Help them decide on a big purchase that they are willing to save their money for, like a big trip with school or scouts. When they get distracted with the short-term want, like candy or a ninja sword, remind them of their long-term financial goals. Time management is probably one of the hardest skills to master through school and into adulthood. Try to start working with your child now to balance homework, extracurricular activities, chores, and social time. Set up a family calendar, either digital or paper, so that everyone can put their activities on it. This will help them manage time as well as predictability and expectations of others. A good time management skill or tool is knowing how to read large amounts of information quickly. Find ways to help them become fast readers. Find classes during the summer or at a local community college to help them cultivate this skill. Explore extracurricular and community organizations to join and search out leadership opportunities. Get involved in clubs, sports, and music. Colleges are looking for well-rounded individuals, not necessarily straight A students. Through their participation in these activities, they may find their spark or their passion in life or just a new hobby, but get them out there and get involved. A great way to learn whether or not your child's interest can become a career is to job shadow in a potential career field. Your child may find that it is not quite as glamorous as they may have thought, or they may find that they love it and wish to pursue it. Find out ways that they can job shadow. Use friends in the career field, friends of friends, or simply go and ask. There may be opportunities to volunteer or job shadow through scouting programs. For example, there are medical explorers and police explorers specifically designed to get students to become familiar with the career field and help them decide whether or not they want to continue their education in that direction. Standardized testing is part of the career college application process. Most colleges require one or a combination of these tests. To best prepare, the SAT or ACT should be taken at least twice, but usually not more than three times. It is important to find out which test the school you are interested in requires to avoid the time and money spent on them unnecessarily. The PSAT is often referred to as the practice SAT, 
The students can qualify for many scholarships based on their scores on the PSAT, so it is important to take it seriously. Keep in mind that test scores are only one part of the admissions. Most schools use them in conjunction with the prospective student's grades and courses taken. Good preparation for the test is needed to develop confidence, and this can be done through practice tests or college prep courses offered in your area. It may seem unreasonably early to start researching scholarships for college while your child is still in junior high school. However, creating a strategy to pay for college will have both short and long-term implications. Exploring the total cost of different colleges and the methods of paying for college will give you the information you need to make an informed decision later, while also giving your child the opportunity to graduate with as little debt as possible. Gradu graduating with little debt as possible is important because it later limits the career or graduate school choices later on. Millions of dollars in scholarships go unclaimed every year, so that is why we suggest you start researching scholarships that your child may qualify for. Two websites that we recommend are www.fastweb.com and www.scholarships.com. As part of your financial planning, be sure to research and apply for financial aid, which can include grants, loans, and work-study opportunities. More information can be found at www.studentaid.ed.gov or fafsa.ed.gov. Students must understand internet safety and responsible social media presence. If something is posted once, even if deleted later, their post is permanently on the internet. Other users can easily repost, copy, or screenshot the post. College admission counselors and future employers look at an applicant's media present to determine their character and their responsibility. Students must think about what their social media presence says about them and how it makes them appear. Remember, sharing with friends is sharing with the world. Additionally, college admissions counselor may contact your school via email if they have questions. If your child's email address is not professional sounding, be sure they change it now. That's all part of a professional, responsible appearance. Many families with children with special needs don't think college is an option, but it is. With enough planning, children can receive a higher education and excel in different career fields. While not every dream can come true, some can, and many dreams can be adapted. For example, if your child wants to be a veterinarian but has disabilities too severe to receive the necessary education, maybe they can train and work as a technician. Discover what your child wants to do in the future and then brainstorm about how you can help him or her get in there in some fashion. Look at their strengths and their interests to help them find their future career path. Preparing for college is the same for every student. Finding out their interests, mapping out a plan, taking the required courses, preparing for and taking a standardized test, and ensuring that they have learned enough life skills to take care of themselves. Students with special needs will need more support doing this, and there are some accommodations that can be made for them. For example, there are accommodations that could be made for students with special needs, but prior to requesting these special accommodations, the student must have documentation that those requested accommodations are necessary. Start researching and determine which standardized test, either the ACT or SAT, might work better for your student based on the subject matter and the accommodations provided. Keep in mind, while doing this, that different schools may require one test over the other. Begin researching schools that accommodate students with special needs, or see what local schools can, what they do or can do to help accommodate your child. While IEPs are not honored in traditional college settings, Section 504 ensures that the child with a disability has equal access to an education. Learn more about your child's rights from www.ed.gov. They pub published an information pa pamphlet entitled Students with Disabilities Preparing for Post-Secondary Education. ThinkCollege.net is a great resource for gathering ideas and resources with an inspirational video of some college students with intellectual disabilities, while www.ed.gov will help you learn about rights for accommodations. Whether or not you believe it, parents, you still are a big influence in your child's life. The best way to build the college mindset in your child is to 
Talk about higher education as though they will be going. Talk about your own experience in college or talk about a local college that your child is familiar with. Talk about different types of higher education, the different career fields and the different degrees and certifications they require. Discuss the costs of higher education and the options of how to pay for it. Let your child know that they're not alone when paying for school, but it is their responsibility. Be a model of lifelong learning. Take classes yourself either at school or online, or take a class with your child. Try a one-day art or a cooking class. If you're taking classes, let your child see you studying, studying the same time as they do, or study together. Have them quiz you on something you need to learn. This helps them understand that everyone needs to study. This also reinforces the growth mindset of constantly improving yourself, that you can attain what you work for. Talk to your child about your own work and the jobs of friends and relatives. Ask your children what they like to do and help them look for ways that their interests can be reflected in a career choice. Help your child decide whether they should attend a high school that offers vocational training and academic education or both. Help your child get information about middle and high school courses that they need to take in order to enroll in college or a post-secondary training program. Work with the school to provide counselors, career and higher education information, speakers of, for a career day, and trips to the local employers and employer agencies. Educators can help students by planning a career day also. Invite professionals from all different careers to come and talk to students about what they do and what kind of schooling they needed to start and enhance their career. Answer questions such as their favorite part of their job or what extra schooling, licensing, or certifications they wish they had or that they recommend to others. To talk about your alma mater and why you chose to go there. Was it the most affordable or was it because of the educational program? Talk about schools in your area and what they are known for, their music program, their nursing school, engineering school, etc. Discuss educational requirements for different career fields. Public school teachers must have a bachelor's degree and a teaching certificate, etc. Go on field trips to college campuses. Check out the science labs and the art galleries. Take an official tour if possible or go to a performance or exhibit. Just get to the students on campus so that they are familiar with what a college campus looks like. You just never know what experiences are going to open doors or interest for students. There are many great resources available and we use many of them to put this webinar together today. Listed here are the primary resources we used. The Military Education Coalition, the Military Child Education Coalition Parent to Parent Programs Chart Your Course Roadmap to Success provides great information on what classes a student should take and when they should take them. We highly recommend attending this workshop if it is offered in your area. Potential Magazine publishes a college organizer, and we use the 2016 magazine's recommendations of what students should be doing to help them be prepared for college. DCU.org, study.com, and parentsassociation.com all have excellent information on how to best prepare for the college admission process and the ultimate goal of pursuing a career. Our research on students with special needs attending college brought us to these websites that we highly recommend. The National Benefit Authority of Canada had some great insight on helping those with disabilities to thrive. The Friendship Circle is a website offering advice from a parent on assisting your college-bound student with special needs. Number eight is a link to an excellent slideshow by the Georgia Department of Education. And the Dallas-Fort Worth child has a great advice on beginning with the end in mind when preparing special needs children for college. Thank you all for taking time from your busy schedules to meet with us today on this very important topic. We hope that you found it to be valuable information and we also hope that you will share this information with other parents. We will be posting the recording of today's webinar on our website so that you may watch it again or share it with others who may have missed it. We will be also sending you a link to a very short survey. It will only take two to three minutes to complete it, and this is the only way we really know if our presentation was of value to you. 
what you would like to see improved, or which other topics you would like to see covered in future webinars. Once you have completed the survey, we will send you a printable copy of the supplemental resources that support this webinar. If you have any questions or need more information, please feel free to contact the MSEC Parent Programs Manager, Judy Glennon, at judy.glennon at militarychild.org. Finally, special thanks again to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for making today's webinar possible. Our final webinar on Building the College Mindset, ages 16 and up, is on April 4th at 1 p.m. Central Time. We will, we will be sending out invitations to register for the next webinar soon. Again, thank you for joining us today.